We got creative and we got loud. Oh my God. What? We don't like war. We want to end war. That, that's what we're doing. I'm a pacifist at heart. I love Gandhi, Dr. Martin. But time is running out. To level with you, this movie expires on December 31st, 2012. Like millions and millions of views, and it's about Uganda and Kony. So I asked my mom, and my mom laughs and goes, He died like five years ago. On March 5th, 2012, Invisible Children Inc. uploaded their 11th charity funded documentary under the name Kony 2012. It gained global recognition, picking up celebrity attention, bringing together artists, actors, and politicians alike. This would mark the start of a new viral campaign hitting Facebook, Twitter, and gaining the most internet searches for seven days, igniting the genesis of a global message. Within a week, the documentary would gain over 112 million views and even the attention of the President of the United States. Campaign supporters would feel enlightened as well as empowered, hitting the streets to try and raise awareness for their cause in an attempt to fulfill the film's final goal, to make Kony famous. But it begs the question, who are Invisible Children? A charity that prides itself on using film and creativity, Invisible Children have been called into question over their finances and the amount of donations used on direct services. This includes the Legacy Scholarship Program, currently funding 840 students through education in Uganda, the Livelihood Campaign, supporting rural communities across Africa, the Schools for Schools project, as well as others. All are good causes, and Invisible Children use films to gain much needed donations, but how much is actually being used out of all donations received? 32%. Only 32% of all donations they received will help directly. To put it into perspective, for every $10 Invisible Children are given, $3.20 goes on what the donations were received for, while the other 68% goes on promotion, filmmaking, and salaries. This means over double the amount of donations are used to help promote the cause, rather than for the cause itself. I can't help but wonder, are people donating aware of how little of their money is reaching Africa? But these are all just figures. Maybe we should look at the people behind Invisible Children. I don't know if you heard this or not, but we want a we want a million dollars. So As well as their finances, the charity has been questioned over their goals. Invisible children are in favour of military intervention in Africa. However, their motives have to be investigated. Could there be another reason for the military to move into Africa? I asked my dad and he's laughing about it and he goes, why are we talking about this? And the reason why is because Kony's army group formed 22 years ago, when my parents still lived in Uganda. And they did their worst over 10 years ago. And they haven't struck again in six years. See, I have authorized a small number of US forces to deploy to Central Africa to provide assistance to regional forces that are working toward the removal of Joseph Kony from the battlefield. It came in a letter from the White House to Congress. It immediately raised a key question. Why is the US, which is already involved in two long wars, deploying troops now? It goes back to one thing, oil. Let's remember Uganda has oil. It changes the calculus always with U.S. foreign policy when it's a country that is seen to be rich with this resource that's become almost an addiction for the U.S. and the global economy. I could never claim to know for sure what their motives are, but with America's track record, would it be that hard to believe that they could be in Uganda for an alternate reason? But none of this will directly affect me. Maybe we should ask people who it will affect but almost nobody has seen it here in northern Uganda, the area worst affected by Joseph Kony's rebel lord's resistance army because there's little internet access. Do you think some of the promotion methods sound offensive? 
If people in those countries care about us, they will not wear t-shirts with pictures of Joseph Kony for any reason. That would celebrate our suffering. I understand why a lot of people are wondering, is this just some slick kind of fly-by-night slacktivist thing? It's actually a really, it's connected to a really deep, thoughtful, very intentional and strategic campaign. But as the film progresses, puzzlement turns into anger. There are some kind of people, there are some kind of NGO who are trying to mobilize fun using the atrocities committed in northern Uganda. We wanted to see how our local people were killed. Correct. So these are all white men, these are feelings, different from northern Uganda. That is why sometimes... <laughs> Rocks are thrown, the screening comes to a halt and the crowd scatters into the night. Kony 2012 may be the most watched video on YouTube this year, but it clearly doesn't resonate with many of the people on it claims it's meant thing, to help. Actually, because if you're showing me as voiceless, as hopeless, it's, you have no space telling my story. You shouldn't be telling my story if you don't believe that I also have the power to change what is going on. And this video seems to say that the power lies in America and it does not If lie the people that the charity claims to help feel the documentary does not represent them, who are they representing? Perhaps we've gotten to a point that we don't question anything we're told. So David, to make our delicious strawberry banana fruit smoothies, we take real fruit and we put it in Maybe their fruit smoothies aren't so delicious. No. It's not someone else. It's something else. Bye-bye, trainer. Maybe it wasn't the trainers that got hurt like that. Now, news bulletins around the world have been following Russia's election rallies. But one channel stands out. America's Fox News has been showing streets ablaze, violent clashes and firebombs thrown at security officers. But with one major problem, the images are not from Russia, they're from Greece. America has, has its fair watching. share of protests and political dissent to be dealing with. Instead of keeping an eye on the ball, the country's mass media machine has turned to protests. The idea of us being lied to isn't the new one. But we have reached an age in which ignorance is no longer an excuse. With the internet constantly at our fingertips, we shouldn't be shying away from the opportunity to question what we are told, but should embrace it. This kind of exploitation of the naive masses can be stopped. We simply have to break free of this zombie-like following of the crowd and should instead think for yourself. And maybe next time we can look past the hype and simply see the truth.